Hey, welcome back to Spinner Rack. We're once again trying to keep you guys up to date and in the know with what it takes to be a true comic book hero. Not a jukebox hero, but a comic book hero. So, you stepped up, you got yourself a nice collection, you acquired something you think is of value, and now you're trying to decide, well, how do I sell this? Craigslist, Facebook. Look, people can say what they want about the place, but the, the gold standard is eBay. eBay. Okay, if you've got something and it's really top dollar value, eBay's where you want to sell it. Not necessarily because eBay is this or that, but because eBay is going to get you the most looks at whatever it is that you have. If you're selling Action Comics 1, you, you don't want to sell Action Comics 1 on Facebook. You don't even want to sell Action Comics the reprint on Facebook. You want to sell it on eBay if you want to maximize your sales. The only problem is that eBay does come with a bunch of caveats and some bad experiences. Okay, eBay is very, very, very customer friendly. If you're the seller, you've got to take some really strong precautions to make certain that you don't end up having a bad experience for it, number one. And number two, just because you put it on eBay doesn't mean that it's going to sell. Okay? You might have been a really good Facebook seller and find out that you can't move a single thing on eBay, and vice versa for that matter. So let's just have a quick look at it. First, if this is your first time selling on eBay and you don't have any feedback, good luck selling anything high quality on eBay. Feedback matters. You need to have at least five, okay? Something where people can actually look up. But zero, people are gonna run away from zero. So start lightly. Don't put up your best stuff. Put up some midway things and then, even if you have to ask, just say, hey, look, it'd be really cool if you leave me some feedback. Once you have about five, then you can start pushing, 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 and start putting up some higher stuff. Feedback is very important on eBay. Don't think that it isn't. The better your feedback, the more looks you're going to get because, again, you have low feedback, people aren't going to want to buy from you. They're going to be a little bit more hesitant. And we're hesitant already to pay for something and we haven't seen it. So, you got that out of the way. You sold the low-level stuff. Now you want to move up and sell some really good high-level stuff. You want to sell your new Mutants 98. Okay, you want to sell Avengers 296. All right, you want to sell Superman, eight, um, Superman Man of Steel 18. You want to sell some graded stuff too, and you want to get the top dollar value for it. Great. You put it up on eBay. It sells, and before you know it, the customer's trying to return it. Hey, I don't like it anymore. Hey, you know what? I don't think I changed my mind about the whole thing. Look, if it's on eBay, a customer, so long as you put a return clause in your stuff, they can return it. So you have to be very careful as to whether you're going to offer returns or whether you're not going to offer returns. If you do, try to give the customer a reasonable window. About seven days is actually more than enough time if eBay will allow it. eBay may have changed the rules and wants to give a customer about 14 days. Now, mind you, it's no skin off their nose. They're just trying to make the customer happy, okay? Saying, hey, look, sure, come to eBay and buy. And if after two weeks you don't want it, return it, okay? And the, and the buyer's going to be obligated. Mind you, you're going to be obligated to return it, whether you want to or not. You can argue about the whole process, but if the return window is open, eBay will force the return meaning that you're going to have to accept the return and you're going to have to pay the buyer back their money and you're going to have to pay the money for them to ship it back as well. So you want to be very, very careful as to that. There are times when you can contest with eBay and win. If you put up your auction and your listing is immaculate, you have put in your pictures, you gave a complete description, and this person just decided to change their mind, there's a good chance that eBay may side with you simply because they don't want to encourage buyer's remorse and then really, you know, cheese off buyers. They still want buyers to list their stuff there. That's their primary thing. They don't make money necessarily off the sellers. They make money, rather, off the buyers. They make money off the sellers, that percentage of whatever you make. You made 100 bucks, they get 10. That's what they want. So they want people going there to still sell as well, even though they are very, very buyer friendly. So offer returns. It's a good way for people to, you know, have some confidence in your auction. But at the same time, be careful of your window and be very, very careful of your listing. If there is anything that might be a potential defect with your comic, just say it. Don't try to keep it out. Oh, I don't want to say this because it may not sell. 
better that, that it doesn't sell, then you sold it and you have to take it back. And now you have to pay that double shipping on it as well. My own personal horror story, I put up something on eBay to sell. I gave a full description and I gave full pictures. The guy got it. He says, oh, the cover's loose. I didn't realize it. I refused to take the return. I said, no, there's a picture right here. It shows that the cover's loose. How, there's no way you could have missed that. I didn't see that in the picture. I want to return it. But it says in the description that the cover's loose. I didn't see that. I want to return it. This guy took the book and bent it to show that it was not attached to the cover, damaging it. And then he filed claim with eBay. eBay said, sure, you can send it back. I was livid. I was on the phone for at least half an hour pleading my case. The guy sent a picture of himself bending it and you're forcing me to take it back? After half an hour, they found the loophole. I didn't have to accept it and I was able to keep the money. That was good. But that's what you're dealing with with eBay. If a buyer that says, hey, I want to send it back, they agree with the buyer without even thinking about it. The buyer could send you back a rock in a box and you would have to take it back and you sold them a comic. So you want to be very, very careful about that. But again, eBay is the top gold standard. You have top product, that's where you want to go. So you've got your feedback. You understand that you need to put up a really good listing. What's the stuff that you want to put up on eBay? You put up your top end things. You put up your 9.8 CGC graded stuff. You put up your major keys. You put up your new, tail, new Teen Titans number two, first appearance of Deathstroke. That's definitely going up on eBay. If it's signed, it's definitely going up on eBay. But remember, you have a couple of options. You can put it up for a straight auction. Straight auction means it runs for a few days, and then after that, it's going to be done. Or you can put it up for a buy it now price. Depending on what you have, that's how you go with it. Let's say you have something like, ah, what's a good one? What's a good one? Ah, let's say you have a graded copy of Wonder Woman number 90. Okay, first appearance of Artemis. Nice comic book to have, and it's in 9.8 condition, right? Hey, you check the sales. You see that it's previously sold for 100 bucks. You know what the value is, so you put yours up for a seven-day auction. Mistake. Mistake. Everybody on eBay is looking for a deal. Everybody on the world is looking for a deal. You put your book up, and you started at what? $9.99 to attract, attract people? It's been up there for seven days. When you, check this, when you check your auction, it's only at $27. What are you going to do? You can't cancel the auction. That would be fraudulent. So now you have to let it run through. You notice that your book only went for $36, but somebody else was able to sell those for $19. Why? Hey, certain books, like that first appearance of Artemis, they're not hot books. There are people looking for them, but they're not hot. Okay, they're not in this heavy demand. And so, you need to put that up for a fixed price. You put it up, fixed price, $100, bucks, maybe put it as a best offer. You know, maybe you increase the price a little bit to hedge your bet, and then you can haggle with someone to get the price that you want. But for books like that, don't put those up for straight auctions. I've seen people do it all the time and they wonder, why didn't it sell? Why didn't it make the money? Because everybody wants a deal and people bid at the last moment. Anybody who saw that auction seven days ago may not be able to close it at that same time when it's closing. And so the people who are interested in it, they may be asleep, they may be on the other side of the world, they can't get to it, and so you lost out on money. A straight auction for that. When you also want a list, you want to make certain that you list approximately between 9.30, 10.30 at night, okay, especially if you're on the East Coast. That way, people out in California, they're still up. So even if you're going to sleep, they still have that three-hour window to still be able to do it. They're not at work, okay? They may not be inconvenienced. They're not in traffic trying to get home, and so they have a chance to actually bid on your items. You'll get more looks that way as well, okay? So now that you've got that one out of the way, now you have the high-end item. You have something like NYX number three, first appearance of Wolverine's daughter, X-23. What do you do with that? Hey, that one's a straight auction. That is a straight auction right there. You don't need to quibble. Put that up. As you check it, you'll see how many looks that you're getting. You'll notice that that's getting more looks than you would have ever imagined. That book can go from anywhere from $300 to $450, depending on the condition of just depending on the condition of it. Take good pictures, that's a straight auction. There's no need to waste time with that. And the good thing about it is that if you're gonna regularly sell on eBay, a book like that will get people to look at some of the other things that you have that aren't for straight auctions. Some of the things that you have that are for buy it now. 
Some of the things that are like Wonder Woman 90, CGC 9.8, and that's how you bring in your sales. So again, eBay's the top gold standard, but it really, again, you gotta go about it the right way. You can get burned. eBay will burn you themselves and still hope that you come over there. List good auctions, make certain that you get feedback. Offer returns, but list your description as accurately as possible. So you can be able to defend yourself. Take high quality photos and make certain if there are any defects, you list them. Don't try to hide them. If the cover's loose, the cover's loose. There's always somebody out there willing to buy the book. And know the value of whatever you're putting it up. If it's something that's worth 100 bucks, yeah, put it up and just wait. Eventually you'll get your price. If it's something that's really hot, hey, Put that sucker up and just watch it go. Don't worry about the hot books. Those aren't the ones that you need to quibble over. Those are the lower, those are rather the lower cost books that you need to do with that. But those hot books, those can get you the looks at the other one and you'll be surprised how much your sales are gonna go. All right, so you wanna be a comic book hero? I'll see you back here next time. Later.